All right, welcome back to Introduction to Machine Learning. Today we are going to look at decision trees. To understand decision trees, let's first look at the decision tree hypothesis space and how the decision trees are organized. Decision trees are my favorite model because they correspond to how we make decisions in real life. We ask a series of questions and the current question is based on the previous questions that we ask. So decision trees are constructed in a similar way where the nodes correspond to the questions and the branches correspond to the different answers to that question. So we'll understand decision trees by looking at an example and here we are um, trying to predict whether or not to play tennis which is given by yes or no in, in the tree and those are the leaves. So the leaves are the decisions that you finally make. So you, when you are making a decision, you traverse through the tree, ask a question, then answer it. And then based on the answer, you take a path in the tree. And then you may ask more questions or you arrive at the answer already. If you don't have the answer, then you ask more questions. And then those questions are again nodes. And then when you answer the questions, those are the branches that come out of that node. And then you traverse a corresponding branch based on what the answer is until you reach the final leaf node or the decision that whether or not here to play tennis. Let's consider an example to understand this. Suppose we want to decide whether or not to play tennis based on uh, the outlook, temperature, humidity and wind conditions. And each of these outlook, temperature, humidity and wind conditions correspond to the features or the attributes on based on with which you're going to make your decision. And these attributes can take specific values. Outlook can take values sunny, overcast or rainy and temperature can take um, high or low I think but it's not in the tree so I don't know here but we will look at it later. Humidity can take high or normal and wind is strong or weak and based on these values of these attributes you can make that you're going to make the decision whether or not to play tennis suppose you have this decision tree already built the decision tree in the slide then how would you make the decision so you will look at the outlook so this is a series of decisions right so first you will look at the outlook and then answer that question what is the outlook and if it is sunny then you take the sunny branch and then you arrive at humidity and then you ask the question what is the humidity like and answer the question whether it's high or normal and if it's high then you take the leftmost branch and then decide not to play tennis if the humidity is normal then you take the next branch and then decide to play tennis so similarly you can traverse all these branches to arrive at the final decision. What if the features are continuous? If each of the, if some of your attributes that you have, have a continuous, continuous value. For example, humidity here. Humidity um, is a number and it has different values. Some are greater than 75, some are less than or equal to 75. So what you essentially do in that situation is that you discretize the continuous values. So for example, I'm going back now just to look at high and normal. So uh, humidity can be high or can, humidity can be normal. So if humidity is high, you define that as greater than 75% and normal to be less than or equal to 75%. So you map um, those high, normal, uh, different values discrete values for humidity you had before you could potentially map them to uh, the continuous values by um, discretizing them into the space so now this is actually again a yes or no problem right is it greater than 75 you can just say yes or no so now if um, you can answer that um, to be no and then you have the same tree that you had before even when you have continuous values. So all discrete features can only appear once along a unique path from root to leaf. Now what does that mean? So let's say 
you have already asked the question what is the outlook like so that is corresponding to the first root node of this tree right now you go down you so you answer that to be sunny then you go down to humidity right and you ask the question whether humidity is greater than 75 percent or not and then you answer that question here would you want to in this branch let's say do you want to look at outlook again there is really no point right because outlook has already been looked at you already know the value to be sunny and you've used that value to traverse further into the tree so that's why a feature one particular discrete feature cannot occur more than once along the path from root to leaf of the tree because if the feature occurs once in a path from root to leaf it has already been taken into account in your decision and it doesn't make any sense to look at it again but with continuous values can you have multiple features the same feature occurring more than once in one path from root to leaf the answer to this question would be yes because um, let's consider humidity humidity is greater than 75 percent or less than or equal to 75 percent but you have not tested another value for humidity so you can have let's say instead of just high and normal you have high very high high and normal right so now you have three categories and how do you discretize that space to have all these three values for humidity now you can have let's say another threshold let's say 95 greater than 95 it's very high then 95 to 75 it's high and less than or equal to 75 it's normal so now you have you still can answer this question pretty simply so you can say um you can go to humidity when so let's say look at the humidity node already in the tree so you have humidity greater than 75 less than or equal to 75 now you want to add the threshold of 95 you can create another node where you have for greater than 75 you still have values of humidity there which is greater than 95 so that those can can be included so continuous value features can occur more than once in a path from root to leaf but discrete features can only occur once decision tree decision boundaries so decision boundaries of decision tree are sort of parallel rectangles to the axis so this is helpful in understanding how the hypothesis space turns out to be once you apply a decision tree to a set of data points so remember the discussion uh, before where we are looking for boundaries between data points we are interested in boundaries because we want to classify right so now let's say we have zeros and ones and um, you can have different kinds of boundaries that separate these zeros and ones in in the graph um, on the left but decision tree will produce a unique kind of uh, boundary um, to classify zeros from ones and how does it do that so let's let's see the construction of the decision boundary um, according to the decision tree on the right so we are only considering two features here x1 and x2 so and both here are um, continuous values so you have features x1 and x2 um, they have some values and uh, the ones and zeros are the two classes that you want to separate zeros are one class and one is different class it may be zero is i don't want to play tennis one is i want to play tennis okay so let's first we are splitting on x2 here x2 less than three right so when x2 is less than three so for all x2 less than so there is a line now on the left um, in the graph that is splitting the space into two at three right so when x2 
is equal to 3, it is a parallel line to the x1 axis and all points less than 3 are on one side, all points greater than or equal to 3 are on the other side, okay? Now, let's go and let's look at the next feature. Um, here we are looking at x1 less than 4, the left branch in the tree. So for x1 less than 4, the line will be drawn at x1 equal to 4, right? So that line, x1 equal to 4 line, is parallel to the x2 axis, the perpendicular axis. And now it neat, forms a neat red triangle here, right? Between x2 less than 3 and x1 less than 4, now we have a rectangle here that that um, is com composed of all zeros. So it has managed to do some classification here. So that's what the left path to the of the tree from the root to the leaf, the leftmost path. So x2 less than 3, x1 less than 4. So that is the leftmost path. So that is complete now. So now let's look at the right side branches of the decision tree. So now x1 is less than 3. So when x1 is less than 3, that's we are going to draw a line at x1 equal to 3. And that's going to be parallel to the x2 axis. But if you see, the line only comes from x2 equal to 3 right because we are on the other side the right side so the right side all values of x2 is greater than or equal to 3 so that's that's the other side right so x if this side of the line the bottom side of the line x2 is less than 3 and above that line x2 is greater than or equal to 3 right so now for for the only the greater part we are going to split that using x1 less than 3. So now that's a line parallel to x2 axis and only goes till the point where x2 equal to 3. Now we have, we go to the next step. So in the next step we have x2 less than 5. So for x2 less than 5, now that for when we reach here, we already are in a space where x2 is greater than 3 and x1 is less than 3, right? So we are following, following the tree. So the left side of the tree, the left branch is, is true and the right is false. So now we have that space, we are in that space. So there now we have x2 less than 5. So now x2 less than 5 is parallel to the x1 axis and is drawn at equal to 5. But it stops at x1 equal to 3 and it also stops at x2 equal to 3. So we have this neat rectangle forming on the left with the three zeros, that rectangle, which is going from x 2 equal to 3 to x2 equal to 5, right? So now our decision space is complete. So now you look at the hypothesis space here. So we, it sort of creates a very unique space, so a bunch of rectangles. And now you can see that all the zeros are all separated into, into the, rect each rectangle is one path in the tree. So x2 less than 3, x1 less than 4 is one rectangle. x2 greater than or equal to 3, which is x1 equal to x1, x2 less than 3 is false, is x2 greater than or equal to 3. And x1 less than 3, x2 less than 5 is another rectangle. And so we looked at two zero rectangles. And then we can also look at the one rectangles. Those are on the other side. So they are all 
you have all these rectangles and they separate the space more nicely okay so the decision tree hypothesis space grows as the number of nodes in the tree or the depth of the tree increases so it can actually represent complex functions because when you, you go deeper and deeper into the tree you have more than one feature more, maybe more than two features are coming together to to make the decision 